Hi. Hi. You're watching Sipping Off the Cuff and listening to Sipping Off the Cuff and also Open Bar. This is a really unusual uh, uh, event for us, for Jim and myself. Jim is in Youngstown, Ohio. I'm in San Antonio. That gentleman there in the blue purple shirt is Henry Morita from Pasadena, California. Henry is the uh, one of the brand owners of Azulana Ready to Drink um, Cocktail. And and if you've been sticking with us, this has been really a neat journey because we Jim and I dissected the Azulana base tequila that goes into the cocktail. Uh, and and uh, you know then we had we got Henry on board uh, on on this so that we could get a little bit more about the ins and outs of starting. Uh, a project like this where we see, you know, the ready to drink uh, categories exploding now where Jim and I just between the two of us have had, uh, I think, three ready to drinks and there's another one coming your way. So uh, and that's just the start. You guys are all on the ground floor. But right now uh, we asked uh, uh, Henry how he got a hold of Ingeniero Solis and 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 got him to distill his tequila. And he said he got lucky right off the bat. And I said, wow, you got blessed by, by the Pope. Yeah, and yeah. Now it, it seems like you have entered the market at, at you know, you have set this bar now. Uh, you know, aside from, at least for tequila ready to drinks, you know, uh, because his product is just outstanding. But anyway, this particular segment is going to be really unusual because Henry was also nice enough, not not just to send us a, a, a bottle of his prototype. He was nice enough to send to send us um, some aged versions of tequila from the distillery. Um, as you can see, there wasn't a whole lot to go around. Oh. Um, this I'm holding a seven year old uh, test tube uh, and an 11 year old. And one one that I got very, very fortunate to to have also is a 14-year-old, I'm showing this on, on camera if you're watching this on, on, on YouTube. Uh, if you're listening to us on, on any of the anchor stations, uh, it's you're missing out, okay? <laughs> One must have got shipped separately, the 14-year-old. <laughs> yeah. It wasn't, it wasn't but apparently time. even Henry doesn't have access yeah, to something. Yeah. yeah. I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm, you know, flattered. You thank you, guys. Thank, thank you for thinking of me. I appreciate that. Um, so what we're going to do... Um, Henry had a great question, and, uh, and and go ahead, Henry. You you ask the question, and then Jim and I will try to come to some kind of conclusion. Sure, and I'll, I'll, I'll admit I'm a more of a novice of uh, tequila, and then you two folks are. So my nose and my, my mouth feel is going to be completely different. But I do recognize that uh, as you go you know, up in age of tequila. Uh, you can definitely find the different characteristics, but then as you try these two or three different uh, formats that we have, one of my questions was, at what point does tequila take on so much of the oak barrel where it almost converts into a modified scotch or a whiskey? Because uh, you will then notice a difference between the 7, 11, and four, the 14 for sure. It, it just over a three-year time frame between 11 and 14 years, it changes to me dramatically. But then again, that's my uh, mouth and my nose. And it, I think about like Don Julio, when they launched their La Gavelin, uh Neposado uh, a year after they had launched the um, McCallan. Like, no, actually, I forget what the first one was, but they had a um, cask um, uh, tequila. And, and again, uh, you'll have to let me know what you think about the 14. Well, let me ask you, are you, do you know if, if these are, I have to ask you first, are these barrels, these are directly uh, right out of the barrel, correct? So they, they, haven't been, they haven't been watered down or anything like that, right? These actually were taken from 100 uh, proof down to 80. Okay, so so okay, so yes, that's good. I'm glad you told us that. So right off the bat, we know that this is a an 80 proof that that could be bottled by somebody and from that. From not, the yeah, it still needs to be finished. Yeah, used bourbon barrels. I'm assuming or uh, used Jack Daniels barrels. Okay, 
Okay, that explains a little bit of the nose I'm getting off of this then. That's what I got was whiskey. I, I got the, it. The, the, there's a little tannic oak on this and a little, just a hint of the sour mash that sets Jack Daniels apart from all the other bourbons. But I think probably what they were going for with the Jack Daniels barrel was the char level. And and that that's different than most, most of the other whiskeys you're going to get that probably allows this to, to pick up a little bit more flavor over that period of time. There, there's not a lot of darkness on on this. I don't know if you can see it. It's a, it's a, it's a honey color. Yeah. For for you know, Jim and I have tasted. Uh, what am I looking at? Oh, that's okay. What this is an eleven year old. I'm sorry. The one I poured was a seven year old. Here's the seven. And again, uh, a little bit of the honey color. There, there's not much of a difference in colors. So, I'm gonna say that these are rather used fairly well used barrels uh, which which figures to me because the distillery uh, is is a co-op of agave farmers so naturally they would be more uh, agave forward in their aged um, uh, iterations uh, age expressions because they want that agave to shine forward so what we know is this is a, a, a an 80 proof it hasn't been polished or finished um, for the market but i like jim i got a sweet whiskey nose on the top um there's there's definitely the oak tannins that are coming through on it and it but but the agave is not gone it's not lost on this you it, it is there uh, i want to i want to taste it because this the, the aroma lisa's been lisa's been <laughs> sniffing it for like three weeks you know <laughs> Oh, oh yeah. Wow. You know, there's something to be said about straight out of the barrel. There's a lot of wood on this one. Yeah, there is. But, but then on the, on, the, on the finish, that's where that agave is coming from, is on the finish. The, the, the wood in the front and, and the agave on the back, the agave finishes with such a richness because of that tannic oak up front but it's not sweetness it's not even baking spice for me it is a rich just kind of baked fruit finish with a little bit of very slight sweetness at the end of it but you definitely pick up the barrel off of this there's a lot of barrel it's very it's very barrel forward for it for a seven-year-old well well you know. and, and it's agave. It's an agave spirit. If you were doing this with scotch or bourbon where you had a, a corn, rye, wheat, barley mash, um, that that fermented product is going to take from that barrel a lot more than an agave spirit because this, this is not something – there's no mash with agave. Agave is agave. It's 100% what comes out of the fermenter. You can't offset the sweetness or the or the spiciness with a rye or a wheat like you do with whiskey. And I, I think this picks up more of the barrel than a whiskey would at this age, because seven years is young for a scotch. It's kind of middling for an Irish whiskey. It's about where most bourbons are starting to come out at, seven, eight, and beyond. But you know, it, it but it, it doesn't lose the agave. It, it's still there and it 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 it, it very much propels it at the end that 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 agave yeah. at the back is rich yeah it's it it, it adds a, a a bit of a richness to the to the finish um oh wow that's okay good. that's good I, I i love the barrel on there because it is reminiscent of some of the other extra that i that i have had um that are, have been finished or polished you know with a little bit more of a a little bit more refining um not that there's anything wrong with this. I mean, I'm, like no. I said, drinking it straight out of the barrel. Yeah. Uh, I'm okay with it too. So, um, I'm going to pop open this 11 year old now, and this is the other one that, that Jim has. Again, if you'll notice, not a whole lot of not a whole lot of difference in the in the in the color. I don't know if you got y'all can see that. I don't have the greatest lighting in the world, but um, the the colors are are virtually identical and and what i like what that leads me to believe is that is that um uh that the you know they're they're using really used oak barrels very much like a 
like a Felipe Camarena would use it in G4. He and he he would search for you know really beat up old barrels because he's primarily an agave grower, so he wanted his agave to shine, and he has a special way of 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 mixing the the agave with the, with the type of water that he's using. So he's kind of got he's working with two or three different elements. So I think if you had a first fill barrel especially with Jack Daniels, the, the, the char on it and the sour mash component of that whiskey would impart a flavor that would be a little too strong for the agave. Now, if you get, if you get like second, third use and, and it spends that kind of time in the barrel, I, I think the wood becomes much more a part of it than the char does. That's why you're seeing even on an 11 year old, a color that's not very deep, like you would get on a bourbon. But it's still getting that barrel imparted into the into the juice itself. Well, you know, whiskeys, whiskeys and bourbons by law have to have a virgin barrel anyway. So they're always going to have that right. richness and darkness. You know, when I look at a, at a tequila that's aged in in a, in, a, in in a bourbon or whiskey or sherry or French oak or whatever barrel they're they're using, you know, I, I look to see if that what the color looks like because um, sometimes it determines the age of the, of the barrel. Um, and so, you know, these are fairly well used barrels that they're using. And, and I would say it, it, they were doing that in order to complement the, uh, the agave that they're using from, from whichever grower they're using. Now, see, this is more in line with, it's, it's much more fruitier as in like dried fruit. This, this reminds me a lot of some of the, some of the finished extra añejos that we've had, at least with the nose, and I'm using a, I'm using the Sasso Jarrito is generally for for mezcal, so it's got a wider, it's got a wider, uh, wider mouth surface. And Jim is still I, using a Glencairn. Yeah, shout out to my friends in Dingle, Ireland. We were talking about you guys off camera. Um, this is, I'm getting just a little on the nose, where it is approaching the um, the the sweet barrel flavor. So it's a combination of a little bit of sweetness with the oak and the tannin of the barrel flavor that I get on a lot of nice Highland scotches. And that, and, and that's simply just because of the time that the oak has had to, to do its thing. But I'm getting less wood on this one, though. It's not the wood for me is not as pronounced as it the was. The sweetness is built up for me. Yeah, yeah. The wood is there, but it's more of a, a baked um, fruit cake, the baked uh, spice and fruit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fruit cake. That's it. Like dried fruits in a fruit cake. I like that. All right. Well, I've been waiting for this one. Yeah. Oh. Uh... Now, honestly, this is more in line with what I'm used to in, a, in an extra añejo, in a oh, polished man. and finished extra añejo. But wow, that this finish is really distinct. Yeah, in a great way. It, it's really um, the, there's a there's a loveliness in the mid palate, and and it's not as astringent as as the the seven year old. It's actually okay. maturing quite nicely. I think the seven year old is a little bit more, a little bit of too much barrel aggression, I think. This was right. a lot softer, a lot more approachable, and it's it's lovely. It really is because the for me, mid palate to the finish is is gorgeous. It's it's really rich. This wow. even has a little bit of honey on it, where that sweetness is concentrated with the wood to, to give it a little honey and oh man. This is really lovely. This I'm is hide the rest of this. Yeah, <laughs> I'm gonna put that away because he's got, he's got a cigar with its name on it, right? Oh, there. no, it's it's upstairs right now. I've, I've yeah. been sitting here thinking about it. That and no, I know we see, talked about this off camera. Of how long? How long can this stuff stay in the barrel that it starts to adopt different properties? I still get agave in this. I think that's what's lending to that nice mid palate rich sweet finish the agave is not as pronounced as on a seven-year-old where the wood made the agave rich at the end this is just i think the last stand of the agave coming through mid out <laughs> and it's almost there i think a couple more years and it's gone 
Because 14, you're talking about prime time for scotch. You're not losing anything. That's you're getting what exactly what you want. Here's here's the other factor that we need to we need to really pay attention to. I think the quality of the agave makes a big makes a big difference. Oh yeah. You know, right now, as we said, we're in the middle of a huge agave crisis. There are small brands trying to stay alive. You know, there are other brands that are using four and five year old agave. And they're not they're not letting it mature. There's not enough mature agave to go around. Okay. And I feel that the more mature agave, the more quality agave that they can make into this tequila to rest it. And and of course it's been this is if it's been sitting in a barrel for seven and and eleven years, I can bet that this agave eleven years ago, right? It's pretty mature. It was pretty mature. So so you have a quality agave you're starting with. And and that says a lot because you're not, you know, we're dealing with the old cycle, not not the new cycle of, of agave. So uh, I, I think the quality of agave makes a big difference. Uh, I'm liking this 11 year old. Um, this is delicious. Yeah, it, it's, it's, it's so almost, nice. It almost doesn't need to be finished and polished. That's that's how awesome this is. And the nose on it's just lovely. I have never tasted anything in the spirit world at this age level or anything else where I can't really pinpoint the last flavor I'm getting. But it's almost like the last thing you taste is a hint of fresh agave very vegetal just for a second right at the end yeah and you know i know we said this the agave is not as pronounced as it was on the seven with the wood first and the agave second i think this is kind of like a goodbye kiss of the agave right at the end <laughs> i love this i really love this well you know, here's the other thing too i think the seven-year-old because of the quality of the agave it wasn't acquiring the the barrel notes it, they, they weren't blending well enough because um, there was still something wild going on. They were they were the flavor profile of this agave with that seven year old was clashing. Yeah, I think there was a clash. Whereas this one, this one is is there's a there's a really good marriage here for me. And, yeah. and you know what else it was funny? I, I, I was noticing it right before I, I, I sipped a little bit of the uh, the 11 year old. From the seven-year-old, I was tasting more, more, uh, it was getting drier on my palate. Like there was more astringent, more tannins. Right. You know, it, I think the agave is so, so strong. The agave is so fresh, it's muy fuerte, that it wasn't, it wasn't taming down. The barrel wasn't, wasn't able to tame it at that, at seven years. And, and so that's why it was more, I, I was getting more tannins and more dryness on my palate. This one, way better. Well, and, and, you know, you know, kind of like the Rolling Stones, it's mellowed with age. Um, the, it's not as heavy, but that heaviness on the seven is not a bad thing. This is one of the most unique spirits I've ever tasted. This is tequila, but the flavor profile on this after 11 years is so distinct. And the nose on this is... I bet if you gave this to somebody who drank scotch and, and was not a tequila drinker, they'd be like, oh, that, that's a that's a 10 year old scotch. But it's got that hint of everything else agave in it that it's supposed to. And it just finishes off so nicely. Henry, are you enjoying any of this? Are you are you I, having a sip of your own or no? I, I had some my six year old um, and then you guys had the 11 and the uh, 14. Oh. So I'm just enjoying uh, your your feedback. Well, here, here's the thing. Uh, I have a 14-year-old that, that Henry doesn't have, I guess, and Jim doesn't have either. And I'm uh, really, now, I'm, now that I've had this, I'm really obsessed. <laughs> you know what? That 11-year-old is a winner, as far as I'm concerned. I Henry, like I got to tell you, man, I, you I, might I, want to think yeah, about I have is left in the barrel or the bottles, putting a label on that thing. Yeah, I just slap the one on you. You know, right. the, the thing, the interesting thing is that, again, we're, we have to look at, at, since we don't know the ins and outs of the liquid where it, where it came from, I'm going to just assume it was mature agave, five to seven, 
okay? This has been aging seven and 11 years. So you have, you start off with a guy with a lot of character. And so it would, it would require it, you know, if it's, if it's so much character, it really does require it sitting in a barrel for a lot longer than, than we would normally do maybe a five-year-old agave or a four-year-old Blanco. You know what I mean? Uh, uh, I, I think the quality says a lot for, for how this is aging in the barrel. I think, I think, I that, think a young and, and immature agave or younger agave, this turns to barrel flavored something. Yeah, you don't have to wait as long. You can, you can wait three years and chop it up and pull it out of the barrel right there and call it a, an extra nejo. You know, but anyway, I'm going to try this 14 year old and I'm using my Luigi Bermioli glass. This is a uh, sit here and watch him. <laughs> this, this was a gift uh, uh, from a gentleman who actually who was the designer of the Jarritos. He, he was very, very, um, uh, very generous, almost to a fault. And this is an Italian crystal glass etched. Um, you know, uh, nosing and, and sipping glass. Uh, it's color hasn't sick. changed much. No, no, not at all. Not at I, all. I, I think, I think seven years is the terminus on the color. You're not going to get any more color character, but the flavor definitely changes. Yeah. Uh, I think so. Especially, uh, uh, from coming from that distillery without agave, you know, from, from there. Oh, wow. Okay. Heavy on the dried fruit. This is this is more of the, you know what's interesting for me is that this nose, I have had in in richer and darker extrañejos. Uh, I've I've rarely have had this kind of a nose on on añejo this color. It's still it's still a, a, a bright honey color. Every once in a while we get lucky and we see a a, a little bit of rust or red highlights in a, in an extrañejo. Um, I don't see that here on this barrel, on this sample. The nose is pure dried fruit. Just so everyone knows, I still have the 11. <laughs> this is like, a, this is, there, there's a Dickens book about this where one of the kids in the orphanage gets a meal and the other, the other kids have to watch him. <laughs> <laughs> um, it was the best of times, it was the worst. It was the worst of times. <laughs> Dark and stormy night, I don't know. Um, I can tell you that the nose on this one is different than than the than the fourteen year old. It's it's much brighter, um, but it's much brighter on the on the on the baking spices and the and the fruitiness, the dried fruit, as opposed to uh, I'm not getting any 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 wood like we did with the seven year old, you know, or even at the fourteen we get a little bit of the wood. Yeah. I'm still, I'm still getting the, uh, yeah, I'm getting a lot of dried fruit. I think at 14, your interaction has pretty much gotten to the point where that wood has done what it can. And it, it yeah. is. Um, I, now, again. With, with the use of the barrels that we're assuming that this has been. Right. And the quality of the agave. Again, right. that I think is the element that we have to keep in mind. Okay. So I'm, I mean, I'm going to dive in because yeah. I can. <laughs> oh. Oh. <laughs> Henry, this is cruel, man. This yeah, is I, cruel. I, 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 I own it, Jim. Sorry. Oh, gee. Oh, oh here. You got to try oh, it. Oh, look, he's... <laughs> <laughs> Lisa, Lisa is off camera, sitting here because she's been dying. She's probably staring at you like, "Hey." <laughs> uh, let me tell you, on the finish, the finish is much longer and stronger. The you know the the uh, um, the the uh, the the agave and the the slight bitterness turned into more of a of a of a tobacco or chocolate. Not a lot. Because it's yeah. on the on the entry point, it's sweeter, much sweeter than than the fourteen. Uh, no, excuse me, much, much sweeter than the eleven. And so the the intake is much more pronounced mid palate. The explosion is much more aggressive, and then the finish, it's that warm fuzzy. And you know what it reminds me of? 
You guys are going to die when I tell you. This reminds me a lot of Tears of Yorona. It oh. reminds me of Scotch. It oh. reminds me, Tears of Yorona, when, uh, for those of you who, who, who don't know, uh, is produced by uh, master distiller uh, uh, Herman Gonzalez, who was responsible for Chinaco years and years ago, he and his brothers. So he has pedigree. Um, he has come up with a tequila called uh, Tears of Yorona and T1. And he sat at our, our table here that, I, that, that we're filming now. And he told us that the secret that he hadn't been told years and years ago was to age his tequilas in scotch barrels. But he wouldn't tell us what scotch barrels. So he's been doing it forever. This reminds me more of Tears of Yorona because it's got that, that menthol -y, long, lingering, you know, dark chocolate bitterness, but not bad because it goes, it goes in sweet, finishes dry, but it's, but it's amplified. It just goes right up your retro nasal. You don't have to clear your nose. Jim, this, this, the, the 14, I, I, I dare you to, to, to put this with a, with a cigar. You could put this up with a, with a good Dominican and it would stand up. Absolutely. Oh. It, not a not a Connecticut rapper. We're we're no, 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 no. Connecticut. No, no, you know, because some you know we do this a lot. There's a couple of our TJs, myself included, that enjoy cigars. Actually, there's three of us, and the seven year old is too aggressive, but the eleven and the fourteen. This fourteen would stand up to a to a a, a, a good Dominican, you know, something with a little bit more punch. It's got that the dark bitter chocolate on the on the end. Um, so to your point, Henry, when does it when does it become something different? The quality of the agave is the key. If you start off with great agave, you're gonna have to rest it either in a very very ancient barrel so that so that the agave comes forth. Okay, like like G four does, uh, like like Felipe Camarena or you 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 rest it longer in a whiskey or bourbon barrel because i would say that after seven years and i've heard this said before i've heard it said years and years ago that after seven years you're it begins to taste like something different now that's not a bad thing for some people for some purists that was a bad thing uh, i i say with what we have here in in our opinion i think in jim you know, follow, you know, uh, can back me up on this. The seven year old too young. Uh, not that again, not a bad thing. I think if you blended it or finished and polished it, it, it would be it would be OK. It would be all right. And I actually don't think the seven year old, the, the seven year old is good. But for the agave and the age that we're putting on this stuff, the seven year old, you can tell now that I've had the 11 year old, it's not quite where it, it could be. Exactly. Seven-year-old is good. I would say the seven-year-old matches up more with an American bourbon where you need a little uh, a, an ice cube in it to take it down. That's it. This is getting That's into Scotch territory where you sip this neat. This the, the 11, and from what I've seen, the 14. Oh, is my God. The 14, you put that extra price tag on that baby and, yeah. and put it in a beautiful crystal bottle and charge up the wazoo, and people will, will kill themselves to get it. There is a... Uh, this is a Tears of Yorona light without the cognac. Yeah, because Tears of Yorona uses a blend of cognac, uh, 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 scotch, and one other yeah. one. He uses, oh, sherry. I think he this, uses a sherry barrel. This right. sherry on top of a strong cigar. Yeah. I think this gets for, a... For, uh, for, for if, you were, if you were going to compete with a Tears of Yorona, oh, Jim, I wish I could just... Splash it on you. I wish you could have. Uh, you know, I, you know what? You would. You would love this, man. You I'm going to tell you that the 11 gets. The 11 is going to get a Rocky Patel decade. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> From what I hear, what you're talking about with the 14 year old, that might be a Padron 1964. Yeah, baby, Padron. That's it. That's it. We're going to go. We're going to go good on the Nicaraguan. Nice, robust. Um, wow, Henry. Thank you so much, man. That was yeah. way way too much fun we we spent a half hour on dissecting all three of these but ladies and gentlemen that's 
that's the way that from from this distillery and from what we've had that's what happens when you age a, t a tequila that starts with really great agave and i and i have to hand it to to the grupo industrial those folks git as 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 henry likes to call mm -hmm. them uh wonderful product i think great agave don't you know oh my god yeah let's not get lost that, you know azulana is out there it's delicious okay. um but don't be offended henry <laughs> If, if you <laughs> bottle and sell this, I'm probably going to buy this. Yeah. <laughs> so, right. well, thank it you. would pay full pop. I, of course, would get the free sample. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> anyway. We'll get you some 14, Jim. Don't worry. Hey. Anyway, uh, thank you, Henry. Henry Morita, ladies and gentlemen, from Azulana. Show the, show the can, by the way. Show us the can. Th this is our... Award-winning, ready to drink. Uh, this is the base tequila that that is is put in every bottle of Azulana. Um, Henry, this has been a treat, man. Thank you so much for joining us. First of all, Thank you guys. and sipping off the cup, which is an open sipping bar, I guess. I don't know. Uh, but uh, you know, ladies and gentlemen, you can check out our um, our reviews of Azulana, Jim's, and myself's uh, of the ready to drink. It was a uh, a Brand of Promise winner last year in the Ready to Drink category. Congratulations, man. You, you're you on the right track. You're with the right people. You've got the right master distiller. And when you when you decide that you wanna that you wanna, you know, go the go the route of the extra añejo, you let us know. But anyway, yeah. you know, we give you our opinions. Certainly these these are this is the rough cut. Uh, you know, uh, they're they're at 80 proof, but they're not polished and finished but i gotta tell you man to say to say like jim said that your 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 11 year old is as good as it is right now yeah. that's saying a lot that yeah. says a yes. lot so kudos to you guys to, to henry thank you man thank you yeah. henry for joining us thank you jim for for being with us you folks have been listening and sipping and watching sipping off the cuff on Tequila Aficionado Media and Open Bar on Anchor FM and all of our platforms. Uh, please subscribe if you're watching us on YouTube. Hit the red, hit the subscribe button, hit the bell so that you you can't miss any of the, the, the reviews that are coming out. And whatever you do, tomar sabiamente. Sip wisely. Henry